Hi. Thanks. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, so today we're going to talk about social engineering at work. Um, now, uh, I used to be like a debilitating in getting a little feedback. I used to have like debilitating introversion, like so bad that I would take the stairs instead of the elevator because I didn't want to make small talk with people. Um, it was really, really bad. I took a social engineering class at uh, Black Hat and it completely changed my life. Like I actually learned how to talk to people and that like I was the master of my own destiny and some other stuff. So if I can do it, um, you you can do it, even if you're not an introvert, this talk is for you. There are still tips in here that are, that are useful. Um, so this is, uh, since that class, I've traveled all over the world and given talks and met people and made small talk and done other kinds of things. I, I love this. I have to add New Orleans on here now. Um, so one of the things that we don't think about a lot is that um, we can hack ourselves to make our lives better and easier, um, but we have to practice it. So um, a lot, anything that I talk about here today, um, it's probably not going to come easy. It might be something that you're like, this sounds ridiculous, but if you practice it, it will become more natural and easy to do. So before we get into influence and some of those other things, um, a lot of people in InfoSec have imposter syndrome. It's that feeling where we're like, man, if they, they've just found out that I have no idea what I'm doing, or like I have no idea what I'm doing dog meme, like that, it's that feeling. Like I don't know why I'm here, like I shouldn't have been invited to this, I shouldn't have been hired, that, that kind of feeling. So a lot of us have that feeling, but we need to get over it because um, we are better than that. So another problem that some of us have is that people are scary. Um, they have their own uh, egos and their own wants and needs. We never know if they want something from us that is something that um, we necessarily want to give. Social phobias, um, uh, small talk is icky, and it can feel kind of icky, but we'll talk about that too. Um, some of us also have it just innate uh, reasons why we have difficulty relating to other humans. Um, some of us have... Uh, grown up talking to people online, and we're much more comfortable with that. Um, but these, this is also part of why we're special. Um, so we need to uh, embrace this and, and hack ourselves so that we can hack other people. When we aren't sure what's going on, and we're not sure how to behave or act, um, we, the, the part of your brain that feels physical pain is actually activated. So uh, it's one of the reasons that we avoid uncomfortable situations and why when you're standing talking to somebody and suddenly you have nothing left to talk about, it's like extremely uncomfortable. This is part of the reason why. Office politics are terrible. Um, they, uh, they, uh, but, we, but they do exist. Um, we don't, uh, we can't ignore that there are um, unwritten rules about how things are done. There may not be a policy about how somebody gets a promotion, but we all know that certain things happen and, and certain, uh, certain people have more influence at work than others. So if we can play that game, we can be more effective. And it can be fun, actually. Um, so every group has politics, whether it's a bake sale or a, um, uh, you know, a, a boardroom, everybody has politics. So, I've got my goal, you've got your goal, the developers have their goals, and we all bring that to the table. So there's going to be some strife, there's going to be a little bit of um, disagreement. We're always going to have to compromise. Bad politics are the reason that we hate politics. This is the backstabbing, this is the, um, the, the people trying to get ahead and stepping on other people's toes. Um, this is what we're trying to avoid. We're not trying to be uh, mean or evil or by any means necessary. What we're trying to do is good politics. So we want to advance our own interests, but we want to serve a higher purpose. We want to make sure that the company is successful, not just us. We want to make sure that our coworkers are successful. Um, we want to make sure that we're giving recognition where it's due, and you know, it would be nice to get recognition for ourselves. Um, but uh, the one thing I want to note on this slide is that um, in 
good in, in places that have good politics, sometimes there will actually be gossip about the people that are doing negative things. So like, oh, so and so, you know, stole somebody's idea or something like that. So there will be a little bit of gossip. So um, it, it helps to solidify that that's bad, and you know, we're the good people. So we all have to work in teams, um, especially. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of us hate networking. We think it's silly. <laughs> um, but what you have to understand is that networking is not socializing. You're not going to a party with your friends. You are trying to um, learn something about the people that you have to interact with. You are um, trying to practice some of the uh, social uh, skills that you are trying to gain. And um, if you think about, like, well, wouldn't my job be better or wouldn't could I get a better job if I knew more people? Or could I um, get things done uh, easier if I were able to do this better? So don't, don't think of it like it's supposed to be fun. Think of it like it's actually with, for a purpose. So we can't be a successful island anymore. It's just not possible. We're working on security. We deal with lots of different groups. We deal with legal. We deal with compliance. We deal with um, developers, product people, whoever. Um, so uh, open offices are terrible. We know this, but um, some, some people have to work in them. Um, so influence will actually help us get uh, things done in these political environments. So it's important to note that this is not Manipulation. We are not trying to trick people into doing things. I mean, we kind of are, but it's in like not a malicious way. <laughs> so you can learn this and acquire it. Um, but we need to go into it with a, a couple of different things. Sincerity is one of them. So um, sincerity, people can tell if you're not sincere. They can tell it from a mile away. You're like, oh yeah, thanks. That's different than like, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Like people can tell. So um, we want to uh, build trust and confidence by always being sincere when we talk to people. We're not trying to be fake. We're not trying to be somebody that we're not. Um, authenticity is the reason why small talk feels kind of icky sometimes, um, because we're trying to you know, pretend that we're more social, or we're trying to uh, boast about something that we've done, or um, just we're trying to be something that we're not naturally. Uh, like, I'm not naturally the kind of person who would talk to, you know, 100 people. But, um, but you know, I, I'm, I'm bringing my authentic self. I'm not, um, I'm not trying to say that I'm, you know, the world's best anything. I'm, I'm just here as myself. Um, so uh, we want our work to stand on our own merits. And, um, and we have to extend. We have to reach out to other people to get things done. And it's really hard to sell yourself. Like, somebody asked me, like, well, tell me about yourself. That's like the worst scenario. Like, I hate that. Like, if you're in a room and everybody's like going around and you have to tell, you, tell something about yourself, like, that feels really icky. But when you do it more and more, it gets easier. Believe me. Um, so asking for help is also uncomfortable. Um, if I uh, if I were to trip off the stage, which is incredibly likely because I'm very clumsy, um, if I, and somebody might say, you know, try to help me up, and I might be like, no, 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 it's okay, I got it, because you know, I'm I'm trying to prove that I am competent and <laughs> that I can actually you know walk without falling off the stage. Um, we want to be seen as uh, high potential, and we want to be seen as people that uh, that don't need help, but that actually backfires. Um, uh, because um, if we don't ask for help and we don't work with other people, then uh, then we're we're seen as like this the person that doesn't work well with others. So it's important to ask for help when you need it. So what can we do with social engineering at work? Um, we can manipulate the social system. Um, once we understand where we fit in, we can hack it. Uh, we can convince people that they actually want to help us instead of um, instead of that they have to. 
we can get things done more quickly, we can build consensus, and um, we, the most important one that I've found is that you can get your tasks prioritized. So if you call up a friend and say, hey, you know, I really need this thing, and you know this person really well, they're more likely to do your task than others because it's you, it's, it's your friend calling, and I'm sure we can all imagine that. So you might be scared to, to jump into the political reins um, at, or uh, try any of these techniques, but um, it's worth just tr going for it because it helps with career adv advancement. When we try new things, it uh, builds character. Um, we grow by learning and doing things that we've never done before. So body language is extremely important and so is attitude. So um, if you have an idea at work, to, you might want to ask yourself, like, do I really care about this? Because if you don't care about it, how are you supposed to sell it to somebody else? Or how are you supposed to work with somebody else on it? So if, um, if it's not worth doing and you don't see the end um, being something worthwhile, then you know, maybe don't do it or have somebody else do it or something. Because if you feel, if, if you can be confident about what you're talking about, other people will feel that too. We are, and I'm going to say this generally, uh, people in InfoSec are, are highly intelligent, um, but we can, uh, our, our careers will not go as far as we want them to if we do not engage with other people and play the political game. So we kind of need to learn how to do this if we want to um, get promoted, if we want to even get jobs. Um, interviews are involve a lot of uh, selling yourself, and things like that. So we want to jump into this with our authenticity intact. So we're gonna we're gonna knock stuff off the table. Okay. So um, we're gonna go into the organization, um, or if you're already there, you're going to uh, do some recon and then infiltrate. So let's think about it like uh, like an engagement. So the first thing you want to do is map your humans. Um, intelligence at work, I mean, you can go as far as looking at social media profiles, things like that. Um, but more than anything, you're trying to figure out who's a stakeholder, who already has influence, um, who are they associated with. Some people have like friends from former organizations that they work with. Um, they, uh, it's good to know those things because if you have a problem with one of them, then you better believe the other one's gonna have a problem with you. <laughs> so you can ask around, you can observe, you can see who people talk to um, regularly, things like that. So we also wanna um, uh, look at relationships um, uh, and, and think about how people relate to others at work. So do people like to meet at uh, lunch and go out to lunch? Do people um, go to meetings or do they hate having meetings and they just want to have one-on-one -on -one conversations? How do people talk? Are, um, are, do you go into a meeting and then just brainstorm ideas? Or if you go into a meeting, are you expected to have a slide deck with like all the answers in it? So it's good to know that. Um, and you can ask other people how they've had success. If you're trying to get something done, and you see somebody else has a successful program going on, just talk to them and say, you know, I, I, this is really, this is going well for you. You know, what do you think helped you make this a success? And people will help you. Everybody wants to help as much as possible. Um, so we, uh, we're also looking at decision making. Um, are, are decisions being made on the spot in a meeting or do, does uh, the manager, the influencers, do they want to take that information back and then think about it before they make a decision? Some people are more likely to make snap decisions and some people want all the info and they want to analyze it for a week. Um, both ways are perfectly valid, but it's good to understand how that works. Um, sometimes in a meeting when there's a question, people will physically turn their bodies to someone who is more than likely an influencer. So that's something that we look, we're going to look at. We're, we're trying to be cognizant of what's going on in, uh, in meetings, at work, um, who's getting asked the questions, who's helping to make the final decisions. So that once we find out that, we know who to influence. Um, we know that influ informal influencers 
are not always the managers. Um, sometimes they're like a senior tech person. So um, understanding uh, not just the hierarchy of position, but also the hierarchy of uh, knowledge and influence. So sometimes you will notice that some people are advocates for security and some people are blockers. Um, people who are asked to do work will sometimes be blockers. Um, so uh, it's imp important to think about that as we're, um, as we're trying to figure out how we're going to get things done. And Maltigo is uh, one way that you can do this if you're interested in that. Um, another thing we can do is team up with somebody who's really well networked. Um, if you, the people that are well networked um, usually don't know one thing really deep. They know a little bit about everything. They know a little bit of everybody. Um, so people who are well networked need people who are deep technical. It's it's a symbiotic relationship. So find someone who can help you and um, befriend them. So body language is really important. We know this. We had body language longer than speech. So, you know, when we're talking to somebody and we're asking them to do something, we're asking them for help, you're not going to be like, hey, I'm sorry to ask you for the help, but I need some help. It's better to be like, hey, I've got this exciting project. Like, you know, the body language is something that people will notice. So, you know, we, we want to, um, even if we're nervous, you need to kind of pitch your voice a little bit lower because you start to talk like this if you get really excited. So just some, some body language tips. Um, also, uh, one thing that we do unconsciously is that we mirror people that we have rapport with. So sometimes you'll see like people in a circle all talking and they all have one hand on their hip. Or um, if they're at a table, they all have their hands like this or somebody, they all have their hands like this. That's because they have rapport. So if you don't have that with somebody and they're sitting there with their legs crossed and their arms back and you're sitting forward, you can mirror them on purpose, not unconsciously. Um, also, if they are closed off and they've got their arms crossed and they're sitting back or whatever, you can um, you can make yourself more open, like physically open, and it can draw them out a little bit. So timing is really important. Um, there's a layoff next week. It might not be the best time to ask for a million dollars. Um, when people get stressed, they tend to make decisions really quickly, they tend to stick with what they know and they're not willing to try new things. So um, so we want to know what's going on in the greater ecosystem of the company or the industry or whatever um, to help time our, our um, efforts. So reading the room is um, another one of those things where we're trying to be cognizant of what's going on. Um, are people bored? Uh, are people upset? Um, is it like 4 p.m. on a Friday and people don't want to be in a meeting? Is it the, the closed body language, open body language, things like that? Um, another thing we can, if there is some kind of strife, like there is a layoff, then maybe we can use that in a positive way to spin our request for something. Like, well, we're going to have less people to do this. We need a tool to do it. And that could be a potential way that you can flip that around. So empathy is really important when it comes to all of this. Um, it starts with gratitude, and this is something that I, um, I personally try to practice in every day, like just out of, you know, out of who I am. I try to be very thankful if somebody does even like the smallest thing. I'm very thankful. Um, I I make sure that people understand how much what they've done means to me. Um, we also need to be kind to people. Um, talking down to them is not going to endear them to you. Um, this is something that you know smart people sometimes do. We start talking about really high level things and um, and or we start like, oh no, well that's that's just stupid. We can't do that. Like being nicer about it is going to help you. And also make sure that your teams do this too, because your team reflects on you. So, um, so you need to hold all of your team members accountable for being kind to other teams, for um, for for just you know their behavior as it relates to other people. When people have been effective, 
and they've helped you. After that, um, we want to show them that they've helped. We want to say, like, thanks to you, we did this thing, and it was awesome. Um, and, and it saved us money, and it did this and that. Um, so we want to show them that uh, they've helped because it makes them want to help again in the future. It makes them feel like they've actually contributed something. And when you're not contributing, I mean, I know that feeling. You, you feel kind of like useless, and it's nice to feel needed. It's nice to feel helpful. Um, positive reinforcement. Uh, you know, thanks for that thing that you did. I really appreciate it. Going to their manager saying, hey, I really appreciate the, what your employee did, things like that, making sure that, um, that, that you're in, you are telling them when they've done the right thing because um, we want to keep that going on. If there is something that you want to do that you know is going to cost money, well, money not so much, but um, if, if it's going to require a lot more time from another team, um, or it's going to slow them down, or it's going to uh, change their workflow or something like that, we need to acknowledge that we know that that's going to happen. Like, I know that um, if we start doing code scans, um, and you've never done code scans before, it's going to take more time. And I acknowledge that. I'm going to work with you to make sure that it doesn't impact you too much, and I'm going to make sure that it's acceptable in the way that we're doing it. We're not just going to come down and say, this is what we're doing. So I think that's really important. Um, Saying, uh, oh, and, and if you do something wrong, admit it. Just say, I'm sorry, that was totally my fault. Um, it will uh, make people, uh, being vulnerable will make people relate to you. Um, it's, uh, if, if, you all, if, you're all, if you're never wrong, <laughs> uh, pe people don't like people who are never wrong. So we, can, we can't change other people. We know this. But we can nudge people in the right direction. So, um, so we want to present things in a certain way. We want to, um, we want to make people think that, th that the choices that they're making are their decisions. So we give them the illusion of choice. So we want to talk about one option, not five. If we, have one, if we have five vendors that we're looking at, but one of them is the one that we think we should go with, don't show them all five. Show them the one and then talk about the one, and then people will focus on the one. Then you can say, well, there's these two other, five other vendors, whatever, and, um, but people will still be focused on the first one. Uh, we're much less likely, if somebody says, hey, let's have pizza tonight for dinner, and then you talk about pizza for five minutes, and then somebody's like, well, we go for hot dogs. Everybody else is gonna be like, no, we already talked about pizza, everybody wants pizza now. So, uh, so, Trying to uh, focus on, on the one rather than the many. Um, when we, we, we see this a lot in, um, in actual politics. Like if you've ever seen like House of Cards or something like that, where, um, where uh, you're, you go to an individual to get their, um, to, to get their, their support. You go to an individual um, to make sure that when you go into the group setting, that the individual is going to be on your side. So if you can do that five, six, seven times, when those seven, when there's nine people in a meeting, and you have seven people on your side, the other two are more likely to, um, to agree as well. If people are starting to get off topic and you don't want to, uh, you don't like the way it's going, you can play devil's advocate. And um, you can ask questions like, are, like, are we making the right decision? Uh, have we considered this issue, that kind of thing, to bring people back to where we want them to be? And when people come up with the idea that you have or reinforce it, we can say, um, that was a really good idea. Yes, I like that, and, and tell them that, even if it was your idea. So we, uh, talking to people, we'll get into this a little bit. Um, questions make small talk easy. Everybody wants to talk about themselves. Um, I practiced this on Uber drivers for like a year, and it <laughs> worked really well. So um, asking people about themselves, uh, we're not interrogating them, um, but asking open-ended questions like, uh, let's say I'm in an Uber, and I say, like, 
So uh, is this your full-time job or, or you know, what, how long have you been doing this or something like that? It just starts a conversation. And if you have something to add, like if somebody, you find out somebody has a dog and you have a dog, say, oh yeah, I've got a dog too. Sharing that creates uh, bonding and personal experience that's shared. Active listening is important. Um, it, it can feel a little bit contrived, but if somebody says, I went to Hawaii last week, and you say, oh, you went to Hawaii, repeating that the word that they use, even if it's you know something other than this, but similar, um, it, it's, it's another thing like the body language thing. It's showing that you're listening. It's showing that you are the same, because people like people who are the same. Um, it's, it's one of the biases. So, um, you know, nodding and paying attention or not being on your phone, things like that, that's uh, all ways that we, we can listen actively. So, when we ask for help, uh, if we can shift the focus of, of the purpose of the help to the benefits, like, um, if you can help with this, it will save the company a bunch of money. Or if you can help with this, it will save you time down the, down the road. Um, we want them to want to help. Um, if they feel like they have to, they're not going to give it their all. They may not even do it. So um, uh, if you can uh, kind of prime people day to day and say, um, uh, the, talk about things that are coming up and uh, talking about how important it's going to be, then when you actually ask them for help, they're more likely to help as well. So. We don't want to make it seem like we are uh, demanding that they help. If we use authority, um, sometimes we can do that and say, oh, my manager's making me do this. But um, we want to we wanna make it more positive. So instead of my manager's making me do this project, I need your help. If we say, my manager said you're the best person for the job and that I should talk to you, you were the, you know, you're the, um, owner of this and you've been the go-to person for this for a while, then that's much more positive way to talk about it. Um, may I ask you a favor, things like that, where people have to say yes before the, the favor, not a good way to do it. If we say, I'm sorry to ask you this, um, you're trying, you're like diminishing yourself, you're diminishing the ask, other things. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not just a tiny thing. It's, it's important and it's, uh, it's got, it gives you purpose and you're going to help the company. If we are too vulnerable and we ask for help, I mean, we, we all know those people that they email like a group disk drive for uh, something that they could have Googled in like two seconds. Um, don't be that person. Only ask for help when you really need it and when it's important and make sure that you ask the right person. Um, using just using the word together when we talk about something, saying we instead of I. These are things that can uh, help us think about being part of a team, th being part of a larger um, experience, and creating a sense of group. It's very important. Um, having those one-on-one -on -one conversations before we bring people into larger can not only make it so that um, you uh, get their support, but you can also answer questions that other people may have so that when you go into the larger setting you've got those answers ready to go. If, um, if you promise to do something, don't let them down um, if you can. Uh, it will set a bad precedent and it will make them not trust you. Trust is uh, easy to have and uh, difficult to regain. So if you always go to somebody and you just are asking them for stuff, they're gonna assume that you're asking them for stuff and that's the only reason you're talking to them. So um, that, that's where empathy and building these relationships and building up uh, capital, um, social capital before you need it is important. You can't go to them like the same day and learn all about their kids and their family and their, their dogs and everything and then ask like for help right away. You have to build those relationships over time. So when we, uh, when we propose something, there will be people that resist change. In fact, most people resist change because um, it, it makes our lives harder. So uh, we, we want to have answers to 
what's going to happen after the change. So if there is going to be um, more time that's going to be spent in the development process, um, acknowledge that. Make sure that you have an answer for how that's going to be handled. Um, if, if you're like, okay, it's just going to take more time, people are going to fight it more. So, um, so we want to give people time to, uh, to accept a new idea. We want to like plant a seed of an idea and then uh, have it grow. So you start talking about, um, well, we should really be doing this. And people are like, oh, no, we can't do that. We don't have the time. We don't have the budget. Uh, talk about it some more. Talk about it as part of compliance. Talk about some article. Um, bring, uh, bring more information to, to them about what you're trying to do over time and give them time to accept it. Because sudden change, a lot of people are just going to be like, no. Um, if there's a hard decision that needs to be made, um, think of, ask questions that make them uh, think more about the, the results, the negative results, I guess I should say. Positive too. Um, but what, what's the risk if we don't do this? Um, what are the, what's the best case scenario? What's the worst case scenario? Um, if we have uh, trusted people that know a lot about a topic, bring them in to give their opinions. Um, start small, do like a test run, like we do, I hate calling it this, but like guinea pig uh, situations. Um, try those so that you can show success and then make sure that they work because it, if they don't, you're not getting any further. Um, some people will come out as winners, some people will come, will come out as losers. If uh, in certain situations, if developers have to spend more time, then uh, it, it impacts downstream to products and customers and things like that. So we need to um, have somebody with enough authority running these things. So you need to get up to that authority point for certain things that affect other groups. And you need to have buy-in from the top. Buy-in from the top is really important. Um, people who are going to fight you have, try to think about what, if you were in their situation, what you would say, what you would think, so that when they say it, you can respond. Because if you're like, oh, I hadn't thought about that, it's really going to uh, diminish your position. Um, make sure that you don't start like over explaining and, um, <laughs> and getting really nervous about it because um, if, we're nervous, we start to over explain things. People are going to stop listening. They're going to instantly recognize that we're not prepared. Um, and, and if somebody comes at you and says, well, this is a stupid idea, don't attack back. Um, ask them why. Try to get them to talk about it. Anything other than just trying to be shut down or shutting them down. Um, what is stopping you from saying yes? This is like a sales technique used all around the world, I think. Um, you buy, you're trying to buy a car and you're like, I don't know. And, well, what do I got to do to get you into this car today? Same kind of thing. Um, but it, it gives, it gives them a, a chance to express their concerns, even if they may not have been asked. Um, some people just aren't going to care and they're not going to want to help. Uh, so, Escalating up the chain can sometimes help if we can make our point to the next person above the person that we were talking to. Um, sometimes we can go up to our management and our management can go across to the other side and then back down. So um, that's, that's one way to use authority. Um, uh, something else that is really uh, useful is using FOMO. So if you can say, oh, well, you know, um, I'm sorry you don't want to help. This is going to be a huge uh, visibility project that, you know, is going all the way up to the board. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll let them know you weren't interested. <laughs> uh, so long-term strategies, we're just trying to build trust um, and, and earn trust and, and keep trust because once we lose it, it's gone. Um, being sincere, being authentic, who we really are, um, sticking to our promises, uh, cultivating the relationships before we need them, uh, practicing kindness, and, and, and helping other people when they ask for help. We're, we can't just ask them for help all the time. We have to be able to help them too sometimes. And um, 
if you decide to take a risk that could cost you social capital, think about that. Like if you're going to go against somebody who's been an ally, that, that could be, you, you may not want to do that. You may want to think of a different way to go about it. Um, admitting mistakes, I'm sorry, that was completely my fault. I was wrong. Um, letting other people win sometimes. I have a friend who's like the worst loser in the world, and he doesn't want to play video games with me <laughs> if, if I uh, win too much. So sometimes I just let him win so we can keep playing. Um, flattery uh, is not good, but sincerity is. Um, if you really like you know, their car or whatever, Whatever the thing is, if you really like it, talk about it. If you don't, people can tell that you're being fake. Um, just appreciating others for what they can do, trying to see the good in people. Um, giving people control over the outcome of what they do. So if you ask them to help you, letting them decide how they help you. Don't, don't ask them to help you and then tell them exactly what to do, because they may have a better idea and they actually um, may be able to do it better. Um, set aside your ego. Ask for help. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Um, uh, last thing is uh, remote work can make this a lot harder. I work full-time remote. I have for like 15 years. Um, so what I'll do is I'll dial into meetings early, and I'll make small talk with people um, in the meeting before the call starts. Um, when I had a team, before our team meeting started, I would ask them how their weekends were. I would you know, make a little bit of small talk just in, instead of getting right down to business. Um, if you're, let's say you're like chatting with somebody and you, you, they're like, okay, we're done, keep talking to them. Like ask them, you know, like how they've been or what are they working on. Um, video, I hate video, but, but uh, video chats are definitely more effective. My company now, you know, uses a lot of video and I have to admit, um, it is, I'm still, I'm still in pajamas, but I have to admit that it is really helpful. Um, setting up one-on-one -on -one calls, you can just reach out to touch base. You don't have to be asking for something. Um, you can try to meet in person a few times a year, schedule like an outing or an offsite or go to the headquarters or whatever. Um, be silly, share, uh, share funny images and um, talk about things in Slack that are uh, not necessarily work-related. And meet daily. Um, if you have like a team meeting, we like a 15 minute team meeting in the morning, um, it, it leads to all of these things. All of these things happen. Some people join early, some people talk about stuff. Um, it works really well. So we got to acknowledge that politics exist and participate if we want to get things done. Um, if you are not naturally a politics person and not naturally a people person, Fake it till you make it, not in an, not too much faking, like I'm not the king of Prussia or whatever, but like you can fake, uh, you can try to hide some of your uncomfortableness, <laughs> I guess I should say. Um, making sure that you have influence and relationships in place before you need them. Um, uh, empathy will lead to influence, so making sure that you understand other people's motivations, other people's needs. Um, and that, and we can craft some outcomes or have some influence on how things work. So that's my thing. Thank you for coming. Do we have time for questions? Okay. Any questions? <laughs> yes. Cheers. How do you get a, how do you counter? How do, so the question is, how do you counter if somebody thinks that you're trying to manipulate them? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, that's one of the reasons, actually, that I didn't re allow this to be recorded in my last job. Um, this has only been recorded once before. Um, I, I think that you can emphasize that you are, uh, you're trying to get things done for the right reasons. And, um, and that you're not being malicious. You're not, um, you're not being inauthentic. I mean, you're, you're, as long as you follow these rules, and you can argue that, yes, you are trying to influence your project or your, the outcome of something, 
Um, but it's not malicious. You're not hurting anybody. You're not trying to hurt them. You're not trying to, you know, social engineer them in a way that you're going to uh, break into their bank account or something. Like, it's not that kind of thing. It's this is just how politics work. Okay. Well, thank you very much.